Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another screencast by your Earth Science teacher, Mr. Stana. Last time we left off, we were looking at different characteristics that we can use to identify minerals. And the most recent one was using the Mohs hardness scale, or how hard that mineral is, or its ability to or resist being scratched. Another very good characteristic that we can look at to identify minerals is how it breaks. We call this cleavage versus fracture. If it breaks apart, like we see here, and what looks like sheets of paper is known to have cleavage. Or if it breaks off in predetermined patterns, like this, that is also cleavage. Just a different type of cleavage. Okay, cleavage, if a mineral has cleavage, it breaks along even planes. So you can see here this person putting in like this little scalpel and it's breaking this mineral apart in nice flat planes. And you can see that there's these very faint lines going through. Those are the planes at which the mineral will break apart. Or sometimes it'll break apart in like little rectangles or cubes or at 90 degrees. This is known to have cleavage. There's a pattern to how it breaks. If the mineral has fracture, it just breaks apart into jagged and irregular pieces, like we can see here. Notice that there's really no rhyme or reason as to how it's broken. Okay, the characteristics of cleavage versus fracture we could see in about the third column over of our earth science reference table on page 16. We have pyrite, we can see it's got this cuboidal cleavage. So it breaks into these little cubes, or it looks like this, or even right here. So there's very nice straight edges, 90 degree angles seen throughout this mineral. We have pyrite, comparing it to uh, fool's gold compared to gold, and we can see with the pyrite, once again, it's got this cleavage, this cuboidal cleavage. One way we could tell the two apart. Cleavage in feldspar. All right, you can see it breaks this way and it's this way and comes down. So this is at 90 degrees angles and it will say us, it tell us that in our science reference table also. Mica and the many different types of mica break apart in even planes. See, it breaks off in these sheets. Here you can see that it's kind of breaking off in this pattern of sheets and the same with this one, a little bit tougher to see, but definitely here. Okay, quartz has fracture. All right, no rhyme or reason, jagged edges on this. This is fracture. You'll see it'll become more clear when we look at this in class. We can also test uh, many minerals to see if they react with hydrochloric acid. Calcite, for example, we take our very, uh, we could take a very weak dilution of hydrochloric acid and put it on and it'll actually fizz or bubble. So this will help us identify some minerals. Okay, and notice on our reference table, where this arrow is pointing, it tells us that mineral bubbles with acid. Some minerals have other identifying features, such as this Iceland spar, which creates a double image. So you can see here, when we hold a pin behind it, not only do we see the pin, we do see it again. And this is formed by the way the light rays go through that Iceland spar. We can also look at the specific gravity. It's very closely associated with its density. It's basically how heavy the mineral feels in your hand. So Galena, which is coming up on the right-hand side here, is uh, you'll, I'll pass this sample around in class, you'll tell that it feels extremely heavy, extremely dense. And this is one way it can help us identify minerals. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll end here before we go on to the next unit, looking at, uh, sorry, the next topic of minerals. Hope you enjoyed it. Take care.